Well, words like that are very impactful, and they're used for a certain reason. And uh, what we do know is that uh, we've had two years of declines, uh, according to the CDC, in terms of the number of teens that are vaping. And those uh, are important to recognize. We don't know what the 75% figure represents yet because we, no, the data has not been put out. But let's assume that, that, uh, that they have data that suggests this. What we have to realize is that what we are dealing with is not unlike any other problems that we deal with as parents. I am a father. I have three children. I deal with these types of issues. And we have to be working together to collectively come up with strategies to help reduce uh, the usage of these products. These are not products that were designed for use by youth or kids. Uh, they were designed for adult smokers to help them quit. And that is the primary concern and primary focus of, of our industry, and that's what we are going to continue to work with FDA that, that on. You are correct that some of the numbers in the study that uh, Dr. Torres cited uh, are not publicly available yet, but according to the people who have seen those numbers, uh, the vaping by teens is up 75% just year over year. Um, do you quarrel with that number? Do you really believe that vaping is declining among teens? I think what we do know is that smoking is declining amongst teens. That's been a st But that's settled. not what I asked. I'm sorry, I understand with that. disrespect. I don't, yeah. I, no, I, I appreciate the, the question, but I just don't know what the answer is. But I think the point is, is that we have to continue to attack the problem. Because even if, as the number goes up or as the number goes down, we don't take our eye off the ball. And the, and the ball is making sure that these products stay out of the hands of kids. Um, you know, we have to continue to pursue our marketing standards that we, we gave to the FDA back in January. We have to continue to push for changes within the industry, but we also have to seek more and more enforcement. We are 100% in favor of increased penalties, of increased efforts to enforce, both at the retail level. But let's not forget, we're, the retail sales of these products, their acquisition at that point, is dealing with only 15% of the problem. Most kids who use these products get them from social sources. And there has been no focus by our government on how to crimp or slow down the access from those social sources. Dave, you so that are, is what, excuse me, let me let me turn to Dave and just bring him into the conversation. I'll get back to you or, or one of my associates here will in just a sec. You have been critical of uh, the FDA uh, in basically asking some of the major manufacturers of vape products uh, to work with the FDA to come up with regulations. You characterize that as asking the Fox to recommend plans for guarding the hen house. But isn't it smart policy in a, in a way to ask, in, to get industry's involvement in the policy making process one way or another? Not to design the recommendations necessarily, but to have input into what is ultimately determined. Well, I, I don't disagree that they'll have input in the final product. I just think what you have to be aware of is an approach that leads to self-regulation presents a couple of problems. One, there'll always be a segment of the market that doesn't comply with that self-regulation. And if you look at the market right now, uh, you can go to the internet and you'll find many, many, many products that are directly appealing to kids. Um, second of all, if you allow complete self-regulation, what you allow is really a PR stunt. What we want is universal, uniform rules that keep these products out of the hands of kids. What, what does that look like to you, uh, products that are marketed directly to kids? It looks like a website that features teen models using the uh, product in lifestyle situations, using them at parties, using sex appeal, using candy-colored flavors. Isn't using... that the, it, aren't they using that to market to young adults as well? I mean, isn't that how you would market to young adults? Well, in many states, the age for using a tobacco product is 21. Um, and inevitably, if you appeal to a 21-year-old, or really even an 18-year-old, what you're trying to get is the first day that person is legal. Uh, to use the product. And that, of course, spills over massively into younger people. A responsible approach would be to go for 25, 30, and smokers, <laughs> people who will actually get health benefit from switching, not new naive users who are just so to build a market in an addictive drug.